Hey everyone, it's Brittany here with another video. Today I'm sharing some footage from a recent trip I took to Roatan, Honduras. These clips were taken during a rainforest hike that started at the Eco-Caribbean Culture Park. This was a cruise excursion and the park was located just north of the port city of Coxon Hole. This was a guided tour and we started with a short orientation in the Eco Park before we ventured into the rainforest. While we were waiting, we saw several hens, doves, and these chunky mamas. I don't know what these were called, but they were unlike any bird I've ever seen. At this point, we were deep in the hike and our tour guide, Derek, was educating us on all of the local vegetation and animals we came across. We saw a bunch of termite nests and a super scary spider whose venom would paralyze you for a few hours, which you will see no footage of because ain't nobody got time for that. Then Derek started picking ripe fruit for us to try. First, he gave us guava, then he pointed out a banana tree, but the fruit was not ripe. But when I spotted this tree, I was praying that I would get to live my Crash Bandicoot dreams and eat one of these mangoes. I asked Derek if we would get to try the mangoes and he looked at me like, girl if you don't let me do my tour. And then he started poking the tree with a stick and the fruit started to fall and we each got a mango. When I tell you this was the sweetest, juiciest, most delicious mango I've ever had. Now I made a point to go on this trip open-minded but I had no idea I'd get the opportunity to eat a freshly picked mango in the rainforest. Not only that, but as I was eating the mango, a hummingbird flew up to me, took a bite of the mango, and just flew away. I was really living my best fern gully life this day. A few years ago, my good friend Google shared with me how ugly cashews are before they're processed. And on this hike, I got to not only see them up close, but also drink juice from the cashew apple. It was sweet but very dry and left a weird taste in my mouth similar to an unripened persimmon. Now you will not see a ton of footage of me in these clips because I had a water bottle in one hand and a hiking stick in the other and I was so focused on not falling. But by the time we got up here, I was exhausted and we were nearing the end of the hike. This construction site was the future home of some rich retiree and they will have an incredible view of the ocean. While we were up here, Derek told us that because the coral reef goes around the entire island, it keeps all of the big fish out, so it's not likely that they'd ever have any shark attacks. If you look closely, you'll see that the water goes from a light blue to a dark blue, and that is the drop-off point. By the end of the hike, I was a hot, sweaty mess. We made our way back to the eco park for local pastries. I believe this was a cassava and sweet potato cake. I also had gelato and passion fruit juice. After we finished our snacks, we walked around the eco park for a bit and got a quick lesson on the Mayan calendars. Now the way that this works is that depending on what date and month of that calendar the baby was born, then they would simply just name the baby after that date. Now their mathematical system consisted of only using lines and dots. Each line with a value of five and each dot with a value of one. So I want you guys to look to the side of this instead of here and look for the Mayan number. Now, the established founder, they believe that he was the one who created the whole world since he came climbing with his animals, such, that, such as the owl, which they believe that he was the one in charge. Before we left, I volunteered to participate in a demonstration where I ate a miracle berry, which is from a plant native to South Africa and it makes anything you eat afterwards taste sweet. I ate the berry, then drank some freshly squeezed lime juice and it tasted like a very sweet limeade. I was living in the moment, so no footage of that, but it happened. I saw coconuts laying around and got excited for coconut water, so I asked about them and instead got an entire lesson on how the locals used to process coconut oil. No parts of the coconut are ever wasted. We actually learned how to um, use a small hopsin stick like this one over here. And this function stick is um, a tool that is used for breaking off uh, the shell. Yes, oh. And then the coconut keeps coming out, you know, like. Derek didn't show you this because he didn't do this in his time. No. <laughs> I did this when I was a kid. <laughs> but it's not every islander who can still do this because. Now everybody used to build, make their coconut oil, now we buy it in stores. And it comes from a, all different part of the world now. But this is how 
difficult to cook now is to get out, see? Mm. Now this is a very, very hard coconut. You would have to work him like this, see? See how difficult it is to get him out? Yeah. If you had to make a living making coconut in his time, okay? He's from the young generation. <laughs> Now you guys imagine sometimes doing what 1,500 coconut by hand, greater by hand. Most women would do like for the day 100 or 300. If they were making coconut oil for uh, the husband would actually do this job, take the coconut out, and the woman would be actually there. You go, see, mm. chip coconut, okay? And then the woman would go into the procedure of using the grater like this to get the extract. You're gonna see to the bottom. Did you guys know that we actually have an exclusive contract with the Red Lobster? No. Yeah. Really? really? So we actually ship them fresh lobster. Mm. So if you guys ever go back to Red Lobster, mm -hmm. right? And you guys order a lobster. Mm -hmm. If it's not cooked good, that's not enough, okay? It's on Red Lobster, guys. Okay? <laughs> and that was my time in Roatan. I would definitely love to visit again for an extended stay. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.